We end up at a barbecue, 12 people sitting around a table. And they keep going, how come you haven't had babies yet? Jesus wants you to have babies. My missus and I are looking at each other like, what the fuck's going on? And a one woman looked kind of like you. <laughs> how come you haven't had babies yet? Jesus wants you to have babies. How come you haven't had babies yet? I looked up for my food. I said, because I can't get her pregnant, shoving it in her ass. <laughs> and after that, nobody ever invited us anywhere again. And uh, my first set, five minutes, I crushed. Came off stage, the other comedians were like, oh my God, like that was incredible. And I was like, I don't know what happened. My first stand-up gig was a dive bar in Frio. And I did terribly, I bombed hard. Because you forget now, like th three or four years later, you forget that it was really scary to go up and do that kind of stuff. Like you get used to it, that's the point of going up two and three times a week. But I remember sweating my ass off and getting incredibly scared and then going up and doing terribly but then when I got off the stage I was like oh that was that was cool <laughs> it was exciting you know but not all bad I did get half a hand job in the McDonald's drive through so <laughs> I did there was one rule on the tour one rule for the whole tour everybody after the show gets two cheeseburgers so this lovely lady was doing me a favor giving me a full hand job in the McDonald's drive-thru. But then the cheeseburgers came, so she made her choice. Then it was half a hand job. But I also got two cheeseburgers, so everyone's a winner. I chalked it. I said yes. I'm just, I'm not even going to... I, I made a juice. I'm going to nail a couple of beers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go. How and when did we meet? Yeah, what was the place in South Korea? Uh, Nick yeah. Hunter started that gig. The Veil? Vale? No, the really shitty place. On the bottom of, on Ray Avenue. On Ray Avenue? Come on, and he punched that guy in the face. Oh God, Moondine Joes! Yes. That's right! Moondine Joes, that's like the first place I ever am so seen. I, I met Jimmy Kuratz at, uh, at one of my first shows at Moondine Joes. Yeah. Like and he was, he was like out the front, he was like sitting on a stool at the front of the show and I was incredibly green and very scared. And I went to walk in there and he was, really loud and aggressive towards me. I remember on that first show, I was like, this guy is confident. I was For confident. how terrible his <laughs> material is. My shit hasn't gotten any better. I'm just more confident <laughs> about saying terrible things now yeah. so that it comes across as though I know what I'm doing. My favorite memory was me sitting in the car in Bridgetown and there's a knock on the window and I look over and it looks like Tim. So I open the window and some guy who's about six foot five, because the same haircut, but he's a meth head, he just leans in, he goes, hey, I'm fucking right home, mate. And I was like, I don't, and, and he just unlocked the door and got in. And then we just had to sit there and talk for 30 minutes, because I was like, I'm too drunk, I can't drive, I just have to sit in my car and wait. Jimmy pretends that he likes meth to get into this guy's house, to wait till that guy goes to the laundry to do all the meth things then raids his entire fridge, runs out the front door, never sees that guy again. <laughs> Do you want to know what's in a meth addict's fridge? Half a loaf of bread, half a jar of peanut butter, and a full container of protein powder. <laughs> we lived off that protein powder for three weeks. <laughs> After this tour, I respect him as a comedian wholeheartedly. Like, this guy has gone and dominated his own tour, made his own tour, booked his own tour, brought us along. I think he's, and now he's at the Regal Theatre, 500 people. I think it's pretty insane what he's done. How we got the show at the Regal Theatre?